everyone, my name is Anna and welcome to my YouTube channel, True Blue Fate. If you are new to my channel, a special welcome to you. And if you're not new to my channel, you might be like, oh, this is a new setup and oh, your hair is up. Um, yeah, I usually don't look like this, but the week just got away from me, honestly. And I've had this video planned to do to film two weekends ago and just every weekend kind of just filled up. So here we are, I'm filming it last minute, but I think it's really important. I think it's a fun video to share with you guys. So that's kind of why I just showed up like this. I'm in between classes, it's cold and it's rainy here. And I wonder if I get out of frame if it will zoom. But Homer's back there snoozing away. So he might, he might make a special appearance. Sometimes he comes and sits right here when I am setting. Okay, long introduction. If you are new to my channel, welcome. I'm so happy that you're here. I would love for you to go ahead and hit the subscribe button and join this community. My goal through True Blue Faith is just to be an online safe space for Christians to come and hopefully feel encouraged and just know that they are loved in their walk of faith and walk of life. And yeah, so I'm just hope to encourage you to stay true to who God made you to be. So for today's video, I am going to be sharing 10 unique and super challenging things that you could give up if you practice Lent. So the season of Lent is literally right around the corner. It starts Wednesday, February 17th, which is Ash Wednesday. And if you don't know what Lent is, um, it's just a season on the liturgical calendar that really focuses on sacrifice and fasting and reflection. So it's six weeks, it lasts 40 days, and some people choose not to include Sunday, so that's kind of how it gets to the 40 days. Um, and then also some people choose to end it a week early or going into Holy Week. So anyways, it's essentially 40 days of fasting from something and just reflecting on your relationship with God. So these 40 days or six weeks from Ash Wednesday to Resurrection Sunday is just a time of truly thinking about the ultimate sacrifice that was made for us on the cross that was made out of love and made from grace and mercy. So when you choose to fast something or add something into your day, it is usually done in a way to include God and invite God and just reflect on your relationship with God and to grow with God during this season. So a misconception about Lent is that sometimes people think of Lent as a season of fasting for diet purposes. And yes, you can fast in your diet, but um, just ultimately this season of Lent is not necessarily to lose weight. And I just have heard, I think that's something that's really become obvious in the last few years during the season that people just want to use this time to lose weight. But there are so many things that you can do in this season other than maybe giving up sweets or looking at your diet. So looking away from your diet. And that is what I want to share with you today. So Lent is not practiced in every denomination and every church tradition. This season of Lent is not in the Bible. It's, the Bible does not say you need to fast for 40 days leading up to Resurrection Sunday. So it truly is just a tradition and it's a really beautiful tradition and a really fun tradition to grow in. So if you've never practiced Lent before, if your church doesn't practice it, that is okay. There is like no pressure, you don't necessarily need to do it. But if you are looking to practice it and you want to just try it, I would also say go for it. Your church doesn't have to really encourage it or force it on you. So if you're thinking about it, I'd say do it. It's a 40 day thing, so it's not forever, but it is really a great time for growth. So in today's video, when I share these 10 unique and challenging ideas for Lent, if there's something that you've done in the past, go ahead and leave a comment below. I wanna hear how it went for you, how did it challenge you, did you succeed, did you not succeed? I don't wanna say fail, because it really is just a time of personal growth and you can't really fail at personal growth. So, but I wanna hear from you. And then also, if you are planning on giving up something different for Lent this year, let's hear it too, cause it might really encourage someone else who is watching this video. I have two more things before I start. The first one is I just wanna encourage you to really pray about what you choose to fast or add into your daily routine. You can seek God out in this and see what is kind of taking up all, all my attention right now that um, I need to just redirect my attention back to God. And sometimes he can really communicate that with you in prayer. And also you just wanna make sure that you're doing this for growth in your relationship with God. Um, not just to say that you have done it as a hard thing, you know? 
Uh, God does not see people who practice Lent differently than the people who do pr who don't practice Lent. You don't get a special reward. It truly is just a time for relational growth and personal growth. So the second thing is, if you are giving something up, make sure to take time to plan how you're either going to fill that time or fill that space so then you're not just sitting there empty-handed. For example, one of the things today is going to be social media. If you spend hours a day on social media, all of a sudden you're going to be sitting there like, what do I do with this? So just have a plan of what to do when you decide to give something up. Okay, here we go. 10 challenging and fun things to do this Lent season. Okay, so the first thing that I have, I did this last year for the first time. I'm going to do this again this year and I think I'll do it for all future Lent seasons really, but to read the gospel. So this isn't necessarily giving up something in your life, but it's adding to it, and so, so to add to it, you might have to give up something so you have more time. But in these 40 days, six weeks, you're leading up to the last breath of Jesus here on earth, on the cross, so why not get to know him from his first breath? So reading the Gospels every day turns out to be just a few chapters a day. I am actually going to post my reading plan on my Instagram story a little closer to Lent, like either on Tuesday and Wednesday, and then I'll keep kind of posting the readings throughout Lent. So if you don't follow me on Instagram, go ahead and head on over there and give me a follow so you can do that with me. I mean, you can never read the Gospels too many times, so hopefully just be reminded and feel loved about how much God loves you and what his sacrifice was um, for you. Oh, hi Homer, what are you doing? <laughs> Okay, number two is to give up secular music. So I kind of thought about how much time I spend in the car, how much time I spend walking or doing workouts. So if I were to fill that time giving up secular music and just filling it either with a Christian podcast or Christian music, over the next 40 days, that is a significant amount of time just to be filled with God's love and filled with a reminder of God's mercy for us. So I really think that giving up secular music for Lent could be super fruitful for your relationship with God. Idea number three is social media. This one would be so hard for me to do personally, but I've taken social media fasts, I've taken breaks from social media in the past, and it is so fruitful. It is just a time of reset. So often without even knowing it, when I'm on social media, I'm playing the comparison game and I don't recognize it until I'm off of social media and just like how much that kind of like hurts my mental health. So this would be a great time to do a reset with social media and give it up. And I thought of three big things that giving up social media could help with. One, it could help you sleep at night, especially if you're a night scroller, you scroll through your phone right before you go to bed. Science has proven that technology right before you go to bed does affect your sleep, so it could improve your sleeping. Number two, it could free up a lot of time in your day and you could fill this time either with getting in the word or just meditation or reflection, spending time with family, spending time with friends, just kind of like doing things that really fill up your soul. And then number three, like I said, the comparison game. I think we all are kind of guilty of it in one way or another. So just taking a step back and realizing how blessed you are in your life and what you have and letting God just speak into what he has already blessed you with could just be, would just be a really good thing. And yeah, so social media is another great option. Number four, I've heard of people doing this before. I have never done it but it's giving up makeup. This seems like a very brave, brave, brave thing to do. I think this last year has really changed maybe the culture around makeup and appearance, especially since a lot of us were at home a lot. So if you are at home a lot and you don't go out, maybe giving up makeup wouldn't be the most fruitful thing for you. So maybe right now isn't the best time to do it, but you could keep it in your pocket for future years to come. So giving up makeup would be so hard, but remember these sacrifices aren't supposed to be easy. They're not supposed to be things that we can easily give up in our life. I love this idea even though it terrifies me um, because I think it would really challenge me to see my inner beauty and see how God has truly made me and designed me. So I do hope that I can do this in the future. It's just not going to be this year. But if you've done this or you are going to do this, I want to hear how it goes and what you've learned. Okay, number five. This is one that I am doing. I'm doing number one, reading the Gospels. Number five, this one. And then also number ten um, from this list for this season. But number five is giving up 
Amazon or online shopping in general. Over the last year, I have been able to just go on my phone and click a button and spend so much money. So I've not been a good steward of the money that God has blessed me with or that I've worked really hard for with the gifts that God has given me. And I can recognize that when I go on Instagram or TikTok, I just get pulled into buying things that I do not need. And that money can be used somewhere else, whether it is in giving or saving it for my future. I don't need to always be on Amazon. So giving up Amazon for 40 days, I hope to become a better steward of my money and just really reflect on what I already have and kind of reset that I don't need the newest fun things that everyone else has because I truly have so much more than I could ever need or ever ask for. So that is the second thing that I am doing this Lent season. Okay, number six is to wake up with the sun. So every day, wake up either before the sun or with the sun. You could either use that extra maybe a few minutes or extra hour in the day for self-care or time in the word or prayer and meditation. I think it would be really cool to be able to wake up early enough where you could go and watch the sun rise somewhere um, and just spend that time of the sunrise with the Lord. One reason that I really like this one is because during these next 40 days, something that we have in common with Jesus is that he would get up and he would see the sun. Um, knowing that his suffering on the cross was coming, he would still get up when the sun got up. So no matter what we might be going through in this Lent season, I just think that the way that we share that in common with the Lord, especially in this season, is so cool and so powerful. So that would be another good idea of something to do this Lent season. Okay, number seven is alcohol. So if you listen to my testimony, you know that I used to have a problem with alcohol. I really abused it. I was not treating my body well and um, just like doing things that were not fruitful for me, especially when it came to alcohol and when I was drinking. So during the junior year of college, I actually gave up alcohol for Lent. And this was my game-changing moment for my faith. Um, because I knew alcohol and the parties I was attending was at direct competition with the faith that I desired to have and the relationship with God that I desired to have. I think that a lot of young adults are probably struggling with this. So if that's you, I would like to encourage you that maybe giving up alcohol or giving up um, social drinking is something that you could give up for Lent. It's just 40 days and it would and it could have the potential to really change your relationship and grow your faith so much. Number eight is praying for others. I think last year, yeah, last year I made a list of 40 people and every day I would cross someone's name off the list and I would probably spend about five to ten minutes in prayer for that person every day. I would pray over um, their unspoken prayer requests. I would pray over maybe things that they fear or are suffering with or pr also praise the Lord for things that they are blessed with. So sometimes I would text a person before and be like, hey, is there anything I can pray for you? What's God doing in your life? Uh, sometimes I wouldn't. And then maybe I would also text them after and be like, I just prayed for you. I hope you are so well. So this is a great way to encourage others as well as grow in your faith by praying for others. Okay, number nine is giving up your bed. Homer would not be happy with me if I gave up my bed. Um, obviously, health comes first. If you are losing sleep because you're sleeping on the floor, we do need sleep to function really well. So I would definitely encourage you to weigh out those health things that could arise from it. But we are so blessed with so many things, including a bed. And I know I take it for granted because I've never known life without a bed. So people who have given up beds and they sleep on the floor, um, they say it's really, it's pretty crazy because they just come to realize something that they have taken for granted every day of their life and now they're being challenged with it. And one thing to think about, if you do give up your bed, Lent is not a season to be cranky about what we give up. It's a season to be just so thankful for what we have. So that might be really challenging too. If you slept on the floor, you can't be cranky about it. And you know, I don't know, just, so just something to think about. I could never give up a bed. If you've done it, share in the comments below how it went. And number 10, this is what I have decided to give up along with Amazon and then reading the gospels. Um. <laughs> Are you okay?
Oh, he's so cute. Okay, number 10. Hot showers. I will be fasting from hot showers for the next six weeks. I will be definitely taking a break on Sunday so I can wash my hair and, I don't know, shave my legs. Do whatever you gotta do in those hot showers. But... <laughs> Oh my gosh, he's the cutest. So my goal through hot showers, one, is to realize how blessed I've been with hot water my whole life because we are very unique to being like so much access to hot water. I'm um, just having access to clean water in general is something that I've always taken for granted. The second reason why I am giving this up is because I think when I do take a lot of hot showers a week or rinse off in hot water, I just do not preserve water at all. This past year I've been really challenged with some Netflix documentaries and stuff about just how humans may be leading our earth in the wrong direction. I like don't want to cause any controversy over that statement, so... But just, you know, like, my role in the earth is I have not been doing my best to give back to it everything that it gives to me. So, watching my water consumption with cold showers is a way that I can maybe start to change that. And then the third thing I've read online, I've heard that there are some health benefits too, like fresher skin and I'll just like feel cleaner and I might be happier. And I think if I'm happier, I'll probably be a better person to be around. So that is what I, the last thing that I am going to be fasting from this Lent season. So that was a really quick list of 10 unique and challenging ideas for Lent. If you want to do one or two or three of these things, I would say go for it. If all of these you're like, wow, I want to give them all up, I would not recommend that. I think focusing on a few things, even focusing just on one thing, is really, really great. Also remember to invite God into this decision. Let Him speak into whatever you need to fast from because He knows how you will grow best. So thank you so much for watching today's video. Like I said, life has just kind of been crazy. So most videos, I think I look a little bit better in appearance. But this was just a fun video, 10 great ideas for this Lent season. Let me know what you're giving up, if you've tried any things in the past, how it went for you, and yeah, I cannot wait to hear from you. So thank you so much for watching today's video. Go ahead and make sure to subscribe, leave a comment below, like this video, and share it with someone. If you are seeking more content in the meantime between this video and the next video, go ahead and head on over to Instagram and follow True Blue Faith. And then also you can check out the Stay True podcast on all major podcast platforms. That is all I have. Happy Ash Wednesday. Happy Lent season. This could be a really great season for growth and a beautiful season to be challenged. So I hope that today's video was fruitful for you and I will see you guys next time. God bless.